So, did you notice this? My bike helmet. I just got done. I'm a little late this morning. Oh, and, and, a little bit strange. Look at these keys. No, these are not keys to a new car. These are keys to the electric bike. Look at that. Yes, I'm a little late this morning because I was assembling my electric bike. Oh my, um, that was a ton of fun. But that sucker is heavy, let me tell you. Man, I think it weighs, um, with the battery and everything, I think it weighs 62 pounds. If you take the battery out, the battery is 7 pounds. So it's, a, you know, it's um, it's 50 some, like 55 pounds or something like that without the battery. Uh, but, you know what, let me show you. I, let me, I'll go out and I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you the bike. It's really a cool bike. It's from Jason. That's the name of the company, Jason. And... Um, they were nice enough, uh, just full disclosure, they gave me the bike, uh, but they did not pay me for the video. And there are no, um, there's, they, they have no say over what I say about their bike. Of course, I would never do that. I would never accept a product if they required that. Um, so they just said, hey, we're going to give you a bike and, and use it. We, we like your RV channel and just let your audience know what you think about it. So that's what I'm going to do today. But uh, anyway, the company's name is Jason. The bike that I'm the uh, I'm looking at that I have is the EB7 version two. It's an electric bike, and um, yeah, I put it together, and we're going to take it out today and try it out. But um, it's a re very very cool bike, I must say. Okay, so let's just talk about the specs really quickly. Um, I've got the website up in front of me. I'm, I'm used to doing RVs. I'm not used to doing uh, electric bikes. So I want to make sure that I get it right. So, and you can check it out yourself. You can just go to um, jasonbike.com. That's, and that's spelled J-A-S-I-O-N-B-I-K-E, bike.com. And this is the EB7 version 2. So some of the specs are, um, it's a 48-volt, uh, 10 amp hour, that's around 480 watt hour battery capacity. I'll show you the battery later, but it's not too big. It's about yay big, like this big. And it slides up into the frame, and you can just slide it out and take it into the house or keep it in the back of the RV and, and charge it from the back. I'll show you that there's an outlet in the back there. Um, specifically, they, they put it in for e-bikes, and so you can... Um, when the inverter's on, you can just, going down the road, charge your e-bike. It's got a 500-watt motor. Uh, it takes between four and five hours to fully charge. So it has 45 miles pedal assist mode. So what that means is if you help it along by pedaling, you can go up to 45 miles. It'll ob obviously be less if you just run it off of the motor entirely and if you just kind of kick back and let it do all the work. Uh, it has a rated... Um, load of 300 pounds and then there are five levels of pedal assist so uh, apparently like level one is the lowest uh, amount of pedal assist and it'll also mean that you travel the slowest under power and then level five is the most amount of pedal assist also and you'll see this as well i'm going to show you um because i had to do this when i was assembling it it's a foldable bike so you can actually fold it completely in half the front wheel to the back wheel you can you can fold down the handlebars. You can take the seat off, and it folds down into a really compact package. I, when I was assembling it, I tried it out, and that sucker, you could slide it right into the back of the garage if you didn't have a bike rack. You just slide it back there. So it's a foldable bike, um, and um, it's, got, it's not rated for all-terrain, but it's got these really fat tires on it that definitely allow you to go, you know, through, you know, some gravel and dirt roads and stuff like that. I think they're 20 inch wheels by, you know, three inch um, uh, fat tires. So they're, they're pretty beefy. Um, so there are four working modes on the e-bike. So there's the pedal assist mode, and that's basically where you're pedaling and the electric motor is helping you along. Um, 
The pedal assist mode is kind of interesting because if the bike knows that you're pedaling, you don't have to keep holding the throttle, apparently, which is cool. You can just let go of the throttle, and as long as you keep pedaling, the bike will keep assisting you with, um, with the motor. It has a half-twist throttle, so that's just basically how you accelerate. It has, uh, you can just use it as a regular bike as well, apparently. So it has no assist mode at all. You can just shut it off. Um, and then it has a booster mode. So um, in the booster mode, or they call it like walking mode, the, the bike apparently will travel um, like under four miles an hour, something like that, just to help. You know, it makes it a little bit easy to push. Let's see, any, oh, oh yes, it has two shock absorbers, front and back. The front shock absorber can be um, adjusted or you can shut it off completely, it's up to you. There's also a little LCD computer screen that comes with it and that shows you obviously your speed, it shows you what level of uh, pedal assist you're using. It shows you, I believe it, show, it will show you your uh, range in you, that you've gone, um, how long you've been, on your trip, uh, the battery level, uh, it might even do projected range. I can't, I don't know if it does projected range or not. I've got to, I got to look at that. It has a mechanical disc brakes, which is cool, front and back disc brakes. And uh, it does come with um, integrated headlight and taillights. I upgraded and put a little basket on the front and I put a little phone holder on the handlebars as well. All right, so let me show you the bike. And then uh, I'm going to show you how I load it uh, onto the back of the RV. Um, and then we're going to actually go take it on a ride. And when we come back, then I'm going to let you know uh, what I thought about it. Okay, let's go.
I have not been on a bike in a couple years and so and I used to by the way I used to have an e-bike I, I had an e-bike before they were even popular I had I think I had one back in like 2003 2002 it was like one of the first e-bikes it, it, it was used a lead acid battery it was heavy as heck but I lived in San Francisco and it totally made a lot of sense to have an e-bike in San Francisco I didn't have a car I rented out, I was living in a condo at the time, I, I had a deeded parking space and I just rented it out to someone who had a car and then I just used my e-bike to, to get everywhere. And, um, and I had a basket on the back and I would love to take it like to the grocery store and stuff uh, because I could just zip in and out of traffic really easily and um, I could put my grocery bags on the back, take it back home super fast. Uh, it was just really wonderful and convenient. So I had forgotten how fun it is and how nice it is to have a quiet uh, e-bike. And man, have they approved over the years since then. I mean, this e-bike is really capable. It's really solidly built, like it's really rugged. And um, you definitely, when you see this thing and you, and you get on it and you hop on it, I mean, it feels very solid. You are not worried that this thing is going to fall apart or um, that it's going to break or anything like that. It, it, it's and it is heavy. I mean, I, I um, as you could see, when I was lifting it onto the bike rack, I mean, even with the battery out, I think the battery, what did I say? I think it's like seven pounds. I weighed it. I actually took the battery in on a scale and weighed it. I think it's around seven pounds. But even when you take that seven pounds out, the bike is still around 50 some pounds and you have to lift that up. So that's something to think about if you get one of these e-bikes, you know, is um, you want to make sure it might be better to get the hitch the 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 bike rack that mounts on the hitch because you don't have to lift it as high as the one like that i have and also i think the hitch one can carry more weight like my bike rack's fine i have the Thule bike rack that i opted for but it has a combined weight of something like uh 60 some pounds i think for two bikes so because i'm at 50 some pounds i would never be able to safely carry two of those e-bikes on the back on my Thule rack, but I, I can put one on there fine, especially the one that's closest to the van, not the one that sticks out further. But in any case, um, yeah, I mean, it was a lot of fun to ride that e-bike. Um, and I could definitely, and I'm definitely going to be taking it with me when we go places. I got to get Julio one too, because uh, then the two of us can ride around. But, I, you know, it just kind of extends um, if you, you know, you're at a beautiful camp spot in the Redwood Forest, or if we're at uh the beach or something like that just the ability to take the bike out and about leave the van at, at your campsite just take the bikes out and about and explore a little bit maybe you want to go ride it downtown you can do that um and then you bring it back plug it in in the back it will plug you know it'll charge off of solar on the van recharge the the, the batteries there you know i think it, it's just another dimension that you can add uh, to your RVing experience and it just means that you don't have to I mean class B vans as it is I mean they they are easy to just pack up and and drive them somewhere but having an e-bike means that you can kind of one person could stay at the campsite if they wanted to and hang out and the other person could go and run and get some groceries and bring him back or run and get a coffee or something like that and bring him back so uh, and they're really they've really come down in price I mean this uh, this EV7 by Jason, I think is um, 
it's under a thousand dollars it's under nine hundred dollars i think it's a perfect match like for my type of lifestyle in the rv you know i can have that thing on the back it's out of the way because i got the bike rack it's not going to take up space on the inside although if it's raining because you can fold it uh you can just slide it into the garage it doesn't take up a lot of space i'm pretty sure you could probably fit two of them in the garage i haven't tried it because i've only got one but i think you could probably fit two of them folded into the garage it's fairly easy to fold um although you know i'm going to be honest with you i you know it's a heavy bike it's a solidly built bike and when you do have to fold it i mean you're going to have to be a little bit nimble a little bit agile because it is heavy it is bulky you have to kind of use your leg and your knee to kind of like at the junction point where the bike folds you have to kind of apply pressure there and then kind of bring the bike together like so so i mean it's it just be aware i mean it's it's it, it, it there's a little bit of effort involved if you want to do things like fold it if you want to do things like lift it up if you're not doing those things it's pretty super simple to, to use you just put the key in start you know turn it on hop on and go on your way that is one thing i hope that they change is the key position where you put the key in because it's on the bottom of the frame where the battery slides in it's it's underneath and it's a, there are the the, the uh, lines that go back through for the brakes and stuff like that are kind of in your way where the key is. So it takes a little bit of doing to get up in there and kind of get the key jiggled incorrectly and get it turned. Um, but, you know, uh, and when the keys are in, by the way, they are locked in. So they stay in the bike while you're riding it. You don't turn it on and then take the keys out. You know, the, the keys stay in. And then when you do take the key out, there is a lock pin that goes through the battery and that drops down and attaches to the frame and, and it won't let you pull that battery out. So, uh, so, so some good thinking there, some good engineering there. Uh, I just, I like the idea that because it's a, an e-bike, I can just charge it from the solar panels, you know, and it'll always be kind of charged up. There's just something kind of cool about that. I always like being off the grid and just feeling like I'm self-contained and self-sufficient. So, having another little goodie like that in the van where it's charging off solar and then it's kind of extending my life the ability for me to the range of things that i can do quite literally um it's, it's kind of a cool feeling you know it's just like it's i'm weird that way though it's like using the microwave you know i love whenever i use the microwave or or, or, or make coffee in the van because I know I'm using energy from the sun pretty you know that that's how I think about it like I'm like oh I'm kind of free energy I'm using energy from the sun so this is it's kind of the same way with the with the e-bike but yeah I'm very happy with it I I um I think it's a great product uh I do think that if you get one for your RV think about getting the tow hitch by bi uh bike racks because it'll be easier to load and unload off of there but other than that, it really is a quality product, I feel. And uh, it does, I think, extend the capabilities of what you can do and how you explore when you go out in your camper van. So thumbs up to Jason for creating such a great product that, you know what, I'm going to take this off. Turn that on the whole time. Thumbs up to Jason for creating such a great product. I want to thank them for allowing me to try it out and um, give you guys my honest opinion about it. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to become a permanent part of the ultra mobility uh, travel experience whenever we go explore places. So uh, if you have any questions about it at all, leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them for you based on my own experience. And if I can't get answers for you, then I will uh, reach out to Jason. They're, they're very responsive and try to get answers for you there. But um, yeah, that was a, a full day of assembling that bike and then figuring out how to use the Thule rack and loading it on there and then taking it out for its first spin. But it was really fun and uh, a little bit different. And I'm glad you guys got a chance to uh, join me for it. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.